people's expense come down? And do the American people have any more power today than they did before this Congress? Joining us now, a rising star in Washington, Republican Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz. Congressman, how should we judge this, uh, this particular Congress? Well, you got to look at the bottom line. Are we actually spending less money than we did before? Are we following through? Are we living up to the obligations? At the end of the day, you just want to hire somebody who does what they say they're going to do. So uh, the Republicans put up the pledge to America, and we ought to be judged by that. If we don't accomplish it, we fail. And, and to that end, how should we interpret uh, the, the talk of $100 billion in cuts uh, fr from the budget, which you and I both know is less than 10% of the, the deficit uh, last year? It's a start, but it's really a drop in the bucket. There was also talk I guess about committee attendance rules being posted and now that's being retracted uh, as we look at the gamesmanship that's already begun how are we how are we to interpret that in your view well, I think one of the sad states that we find ourselves in is that $100 billion is such a small amount of money. It's a huge, massive amount of money, and it just shows how big and pervasive this problem is. 25 cents out of every dollar being spent in this country is spent by the federal government, and we're paying about five to $600 million a day just in interest on our debt. So, look, we're in this together. I know I, you know, I want to work in a bipartisan way, but... You know, at the end of the day, we got a tough job. We got to we got to actually do some things around here that are going to be unpopular. Uh, do you think the debate is as simple as as are we spending a lot or spending a little, or is there so is there something to be said for? Uh, I think it was a David Brooks column that was out earlier this week about the achievement test and whether uh, forget a lot or a little, uh, are we effective? Are we actually efficient, uh, regardless of what the dollars are? Well, I didn't actually see the article, but the concept that you're putting forth, yeah, it's easy for me to come on and say we got to spend less, of course. But the question is, what and how are we going to do it? I would like to see us do that in a bipartisan way. I've worked with some of the Democrats on the other side of the aisle, and we, we, but we've got to actually cut some things around here. We can't keep spending like we've been spending. If you were to look at one of the the number one thing that seems to be on the cutting agenda, uh, it, there's all the talk about uh, the Obama health care bill. Uh, the GOP argument has been uh, about cost, how it's, it's a job killer. Uh, you and I both know that at least by virtue of, and I, again, we're probably both equally skeptical about a lot of these numbers, but uh, keeping Obamacare, according to the budget office, reduces the deficit by $143 billion. Repealing it adds $1.3 trillion. Uh, how does repealing Obamacare help create jobs or help anybody, really? Well, there are a lot of tax paying uh, uh, taxpayers who will actually benefit from repealing this. In my own district, the 3rd District of Utah, we host a lot of medical manufacturers. Well, they put a new tax on medical devices. And so I've got literally thousands of people in Utah's 3rd District that now companies like Merit Medical have got to figure yeah. out how to deal with this tax I understand increase. that, but, but my question more broadly is, listen, you and I both know our health care system is exquisitely expensive. We've yeah. got an employer-based health care yeah. system monopoly system that was in existence before Obamacare it's in existence after Obamacare they didn't want to deal with it with the Democrats the Republicans are coming in saying listen you want to repeal some of these taxes that's fine but no one is dealing with the elephant in the room which is that we have an employer-based health insurance monopoly in this country that is gouging us whether we mandate people to buy into it or not and no one in the political theater seems prepared to address that fact well I think we have a mandate I think that the reason the Republicans were swept into office were in part the problem promise to repeal Obamacare. And there are things that we should be doing in a bipartisan way. Selling uh, products a lot, a lot across state lines, for instance, that's a bipartisan issue. Of course we should be able to deal with those types of things. But we're going to differ, we're going to differ, but we should have that tug of war. We should have that openness and transparency that the president promised and did not deliver on in making sure that all of these deliberations are done in the openness and transparency of day. There's no easy silver bullet. If it was easy, it would have been done a long time ago. But the reality is the Obamacare drives up the cost of health care. Everybody can look at their own policy and say, is it more expensive now than it was two years ago? Yes. That's the, the same problem. We have well, to do that. Let me ask you a question, though. Is it fair to say that, the, that Obamacare is driving up the cost of health care, or is it the health insurance monopoly that has the pricing leverage that is codified by Obamacare, but the exemption, the antitrust exemption was in place before Obamacare? The employer-based health care system in general is exquisitely expensive and is riddled with terrible incentives. The fee for, I mean, we don't have to have a whole health care debate, right. but I just feel like it's a little bit disingenuous to assert that, that, that fixing health care, so to speak, or fixing the costs of health care is a function of repealing this most recent piece of clearly flawed legislation.
Well, Republicans feel that this would be a step in the right direction. For instance, tort reform, which is hundreds of billions of dollars in costs oh, going out on, the door Jay, to Charlie. Uh, that's pennies com by comparison, though, the, the legal but aspect you can't, is you can't, pennies. By, that's just another $100 billion fix to a multi-trillion dollar problem. Uh, if I had one one trillion dollar fix for it, I would implement it. But we're going to have to chop at this by the tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars at a time. Yeah. And I'm just saying that's one thing in Obamacare that we didn't address, which is tort reform, which I think from the Republican side of the aisle, we made a compelling argument to say that's one piece of the pie. I wish I could present the whole pie yeah. and solve it all for you. I, I can't. But, but that that one piece is an important piece I, that's not fine. in Obamacare. But at the end of the day, you say this is this is difficult. And clearly it, it is, yeah, it is yeah. a major undertaking to address these things, but is not the primary reason restructuring health care or restructuring the uh, banking and investment system or whatever it may be is so difficult is not because the answers are not apparent or the answers are not achievable, whether it's uh, a national exchange, whether it, whatever the, the answer may be. And again, you and I uh, could begin that conversation. We'd certainly want to involve a lot of others before we would finish it. But at the end of the day, the barrier seems to me not the difficulty of solving the problem, the barrier seems to be to muster the courage to engage the incredibly powerful special interests who perpetuate their existence, the health insurance monopoly, the subsidized multi-trillion dollar banking system. The challenge is not, and how do we do it? Oh my God, it's so hard. The challenge is these people have such a stranglehold on policy to protect their own businesses that it is coming at the expense of the American taxpayer, the debt ceiling, and ultimately the quality of things like health care investment, etc. Am I wrong in that assessment? Oh, to, to that, I totally agree with you. In fact, I agree with you on, on, on most things. Uh, the example that I would give is the transportation industry. We introduced a rule that would actually make sure that the gas tax actually gets back to the states. And boy, the, the transportation industry just went crazy because they felt like that wasn't enough. And what if you actually cut what is, di they absolutely came unglued. And so, these are the tough, difficult things. Uh, we, I, I've only been here uh, two years. I was just sworn in for my second term. I have yet to see really cut yeah. anything. So, I, I, you know, we can't even cut a, a million dollar <laughs> annual subsidy for Mohair, for goodness I, I, sake. I know. So, but if we were to accept that the difficult thing is not, oh my God, how do we solve this? There's plenty yeah. of brilliant men and women in this country who would have yeah. lots of solutions uh, that are not even in the room frequently, that the challenge is, creating a place for real solutions that may disrupt the status quo those systems that date back to 1945 1950 how do we collectively muster the courage to engage those in, to engage those entrenched interests I think that's the collective challenge for the 112th Congress, both sides of the aisle, both bodies, including the White House. Are we going to actually make tough, difficult choices? Because we can't be all things to all people. Yeah. We're going to have to figure out how to do more with less. We can't operate with these kind of numbers. They're absolutely out of control. Um, yeah. And that's what remains to be seen. All right. Uh, Congressman, congrats on your second hey. term. Thanks, and, uh, We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jason Chaffetz. Coming up here on the Dylan Radigan Show. Much more on this new Congress and what it means to all of us who care about good.